it towards you. Yeah, my top of my head's kind of cut off. There. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Good. <laughs> I'll try not squint my eyes up when I'm looking at the chat. <laughs> Hi, everybody. It looks like we're live. Let's see, 10 o'clock. That's pretty close to being on time. So, welcome. Welcome to our Joyful and Merry Quilting Night Owl Hangout. And I have to tell you, you East Coast Night Owls, bravo for sticking it out and joining me. I know it's late your day, uh, 11 p.m. So thank you for being here. And everybody else, thank you for being here too. I hope that this is a good time for all of you and we're all able to share things uh, uh, if we're a night owl or maybe we're not, but you live on the West Coast, then it might be a little bit easier for you to to join us at this time rather than our early morning or early afternoon um, uh, live sessions. So thank you for being here. Welcome, welcome, welcome. I am Mary from Joyful and Mary Quilting, and I am pleased to welcome you to, I don't know how many we've done of these now so far, maybe six or seven. I don't know. We've been doing pretty well. I want to tell you right as we get started, and I'll try and remember to remind you at the end, we do our night owl quilting uh, the second and the fourth Monday of the month. So this month, October, actually has an extra Monday in it, and that will kind of set us off so that there's two weeks in between our next night owl. So make sure that you pay attention. Uh, let me see. I think it's um, the next one is going to be, ooh, I wrote it down. You look at, uh, no, it's the second Monday, November 13th. So it'll be the next one will be November 13th at 10 p.m. Central Time. And uh, just keep that in mind and I'll keep you all posted about everything and when it's going to happen. I see that we have lots of you are joining us already. Please let us know where you're from. I think that is so fun to see how many people we've gathered together and kind of, uh, you know, the camaraderie that, that develops as a result of this. So I hope that as you all are chatting over in the chat section that you actually um, can relate a little bit to each other and where you're from and, and learn something new about those of you who are from far, far away. So thank you all for sharing. And, and again, it's just really fun for me to look at that. And I, I enjoy seeing uh, where everybody is from. We have um, just a couple of things that I want to share with you. I got to check my notes to make sure I don't forget anything. Uh, first of all, please like and please subscribe. Like is really important. So if we're, if everybody that gets on here just clicks that little like, um, I would be really grateful because, again, the more likes we have and the more subscriptions we have, the better it is for us um, as a YouTube channel to get seen by other folks. So we are really we are fast approaching our 5000 subscriber mark, which we are just so amazed by and so excited by. And uh, if you haven't subscribed to the channel yet, all you have to do is click on that little bell and then you're subscribed. That's all there is to it. You've got a YouTube channel. Uh, you personally do. And that's what subscribes you to this. They don't do anything. You don't get emails or anything about it. But what you do get is your the little bell. Um, you'll get a list of anybody that has new content that you've subscribed to. So if you're on YouTube and you look and you see, oh, Joyful and Mary Quilting has something new, then you can click on that and go and watch. Um, a lot of times we find that people that locate our videos They'll watch a video and they don't realize there's more. We have more videos when you go to our channel. We have videos, we have shorts, we have lives. We have all sorts of things that um, you can watch with different topics. Some things like our podcasts are a little bit longer. Um, our live, of course, is live, so you never know what's going to happen. And then we have tips that usually come out on Tuesday that are just all sorts of quilting tips that I do research on. So if you're interested in any of that, go take a look and see. There's a lot of different ones available there that might be of help to you if you're looking for something in particular, or maybe you're just looking and you want to watch something and, and see, um, get some information about a particular product. I'm going to, I want to talk to you just a real a quick second about welcome Kathy from Ohio, first time viewer. Yay, we're so excited. That's another thing we should do. Right, if you're first time joining us, we would uh, love to know that as well. And we wanna welcome you. We wanna give you an official welcome. 
to make sure that you know that we are very happy to have you as part of our joyful and merry quilting community. If you are brand new here, or maybe you haven't heard me say this, um, I have said many times that our quilting channel, Joyful and Merry Quilting, is more than just sewing seams and cutting fabric. It is a whole body experience, truly. Those of you who are quilters, you know what I'm talking about. It brings us joy. Quilting does. For me, the history brings me joy. The I like to cut fabric. It brings me joy. I like to sew it together. I like to design patterns. I like to make quilts. I like to give quilts away. I like the way it makes me feel when I am sitting at my sewing machine and I am creating or when I'm sitting at my cutting table and I'm cutting. I love that feeling too. So it is an escape for me, a therapy for me, something that lifts my spirits and makes me actually so grateful that this particular art form is out there for me and for you. And so I welcome you. And I'm just really, really excited to share these moments with you. I can't tell you how much this is the highlight of my week when I'm able to just talk directly to you, uh, whether it's in a podcast or, or in a live or whatever. So please ask questions if you have any. Please, ask, if, if you're watching this and, and you're not watching live, you're watching later, you can just comment. And I answer every single comment. I try and answer all of your questions as best as I can. So again, if you have any questions that you, that you um, any quilting questions or any, you know, really whatever you want to know, I'll do my best to answer and, and uh, we'll see, uh, see, see what we can do if there's a difficulty problem, um, something that you need a solution for. I'll do my best to figure that out. Some people have asked me to um, check out different products. So I've got a long list. If you've given me a product and, and I haven't done it yet, it's on the list, believe me, but we only do one a week. So I try my best to do it. But one of the products I tested out, and I'm going to have to tell you, I have not had one yet that I have been really disappointed with. But this one, I don't know if any of you have ever heard of it or you've ever used it. It's called Ever Sewn, and it's a sewing machine needle threader. Okay, my needle, I have a really nice sewing machine, but for some reason, the needle threader has never worked. I took it in to have it serviced. They said that it needed a little tweaking and they tweaked it and it didn't, it didn't work. It still doesn't work. And, you know, maybe it's user error. Very could, could very well be, that's for sure. But I can't get it to thread my needle. So I, you know, thread my needle the, the old fashioned way every time. But it would re be really nice because my other sewing machine, I just pop down the little lever and it just grabs my thread and pulls it through. And I like that. So I saw this product and I thought, this sounds like a good idea sewing machine needle threader. So it looked pretty complicated. It looked like it was something that was sturdy. So I bought it. Okay, well, first of all, I read the instructions on the back and I don't know if you can see the instructions, but they are microscopic sized. And I have pretty good eyes. I usually don't wear glasses when I'm reading. And as I'm looking at this, I can't, I can't read what it says. So it's supposed to be what they advertise it for are people that can't see the eye of the sewing machine needle and you need something to help you. But if you can't read the instructions on the back of the package, I'm not sure this is going to be very helpful. So I thought, okay, let me go online and try and find a video or something that will walk me through it. I looked and I looked and I looked. I couldn't find anything. I did find um, some of their other products that they were advertising or how to, sew, how to um, thread their sewing machines, but I could not find anything that used this product. So that was not good. So I thought, okay, I'll do it myself. I'm going to follow the instructions exactly the way they are on the package and see what I can do. So I did, I looked and they were, like I say, they, they were a little confusing and I set it up and basically it has this little thing right here that, that pops into your sewing machine and it pulls the thread through. Uh, it's like a little tiny, I don't know how to describe it, a little, little hook. So I, I tried it the way that it said, put it in there, couldn't get it to work. Tried it <clears throat> several different times, couldn't get it to work, did it thread it just like, it broke my needle in half. I broke my needle right in half as I was trying to, to feed this through. So that did not make me happy. And that did not impress me at all because I thought, my gosh, I didn't hardly do anything. And I broke a needle. When have you ever broken a needle in half trying to thread your thread through the hole in the needle, the eye of the needle? Never. I have never had that issue. So that did not impress me one little bit. So then I thought, you know, again, probably user error. So I asked Terry to try it out because he's real good at this kind of stuff. So he looked at it. He took it over to the sewing machine. He said he was able to finally thread it, but he said it was a lot easier just to poke the thread right through the eye of the needle on his own without having to use this little needle threader. 
So this needle threader, if anyone has ever used it and there's a trick to it, let me know. If I don't hear from anybody within a week, it's going in the garbage because I it's not very expensive. But either way, uh, I'd give this a definite thumbs down. So, um, oh, sitting in, okay, sitting and cutting is something that I have a special table. I have a Martelli table. And my Martelli table is what I use here. It's not cheap, but for me, it is amazing. It goes up and down. So not only does it go up and down so that I can have it lower, if I was, I'm, I, did I even say what the question was? Okay, I didn't, I, I always forget to do that. <laughs> I'm sorry. A question was, I read the question and then I think you read it right along with me. Uh, the question was, how do I cut sitting down? When Because um, the person that asked the question said, how do you cut sitting down? Because her back really hurts when she's cutting, when she's standing up. And my point is that I have a Martelli table that not only moves up and down, but it also tips this direction. So what you can do if you have any kind of an issue is you can tip your table up and you kind of cut uphill a little bit. And the way they demonstrated it was sometimes when you're cutting and, you're, and your cutting mat is down here and you have to bend every single time you are cutting, when your table is tipped up, you're not bending, you're just cutting this direction. And the way the Martelli rulers work, they hug the mat. So you're able to cut um, in that direction. So that's that's the, the Martelli um, uh, hint when it comes to cutting fabric. Now, I don't tip mine. I don't need to. But when I sit, I have my chair up high enough and I have my table down low enough that I don't have any trouble cutting at all. It works really well. So anyway, that's, that's what works for me. Um, possibly other people may have a suggestion when it comes to just maybe adjusting the height of the table so that you don't have to stand the whole time you're cutting. Now, if I am cutting something really large, especially if I'm using my stripology ruler, I, I always cut standing up just because I feel like I'm more accurate. I can see better and I'm able to do that. But when I'm cutting small strips or if I'm foundation piecing, I never stand. I always sit and I always have my table and my chair adjusted so that it doesn't really bother it. it doesn't really bother my back. So anyway, I hope that helps you a little bit. Oh, a mug rug. Someone would like to know if we could make a mug rug. Yeah, that would be really fun. I'll put that on the list. That would be really great. We have, I don't know if you remember this, but we have our candle cozy that I showed. I don't know if I've got my mug down here. Let's pretend this is a mug. <laughs> and it actually fits a three inch base. So it's kind of a cute way. Oh, here, I do have my mug. Okay, so the mug, mug most mugs are about this size. And the way this works is it just fits right in the, you can see, it just fits right in those, the little pouch right here and keeps your mug stable, which I really love because look at this, it doesn't move. It stays here because these pieces are strong enough to hold it in place. And you don't have that topsy turvy that you might have with a regular mug rug that doesn't have that. Plus it's insulated, so I know that it's not going to get my table hot. So that's my my solution to the mug rug. This is available on our website, joyfulandmerryquilting.com. Just look for the candle cozy pattern. We probably should rename it and say uh, candle cozy and mug rug because it really does work well for this. Uh, we've used it for all sorts of things, but I really like it. My Project Linus mug fits in there nicely. And um, it's, it's, it's very simple, very easy to make. If you want to know how to make it, go back to the live where I make this. It's the first one that we did for our favors, the favors that we made. Um, we've got five favors that I did basically because we always have people asking, you know, I got to make something quick for the holidays for my, my quilting group or my guild or whatever, what can I make? And so these are, these five projects were easy projects that you could make quickly and they're nice. There's something nice that you can do. So uh, thank you for asking that question, but I think that works, that mug rug works well. Uh, or that candle cozy works well as a mug rug, you might consider trying that. Now, I have to show you what I got in the mail today. Uh, you know, fabric. I got this bundle of fabric. It's called So, S-E-W, <laughs> clever, huh? So in Love by Benertex. It's a Nicole de Camp um, uh, set. Okay, so it's So, S-E-W, in Love. And the fabrics in here are 
are just gorgeous. We've got sewing, well, that's upside down, but uh, sewing, pins, buttons, um, just threads, all different kinds of threads. Uh, here's thread on the fabric. Um, beautiful flowers. There's another one. More thread, different color background, more buttons. And then it's also in black. Look at that, the little pins in black, the writing in black. Okay, we've got that. And then I bought some larger pieces. This one and this one, the pins. And this one, the panel. And then this one also is just the cross stitch look of all the sewing and needles and everything. I bought that because I'm going to tell you about, about what we're doing in December. And this is part of that. And I'm, I'm, what is this, October 24th? So I'm just going to give you a sneak peek. Uh, in December, what we talked about at our live on Wednesday, uh, Thursday last week during the daytime was we talked about advent calendars. And everybody's talking on all the quilting pages, talking about the advent calendars. And, and some people are really excited because they can't wait to get their box with all their gifts in it. And some people are really angry because they didn't buy one and they don't want to hear about everybody's gifts. And some people are wishing they would have, but it's too late. And so now they're disappointed. So there's all kinds of emotions that come with these advent calendars, which should be just a lot of fun. One of the big issues back and forth about these advent calendars is I love getting a present every day. I love getting a surprise every day, but I hate to spend the money. Why? First of all, because usually they're a lot of money. They're, they can be upwards $200, $300, depending on what you get. Some of them aren't, but then, you know, your gifts aren't the same. And then the other issue is you get a box full of stuff. Do you like all 25 items? Chances are no. Maybe you like half of the items. Well, that's okay, I guess. You can give the other half away. Last year, I got one. I gave every item away. Well, actually, I kept two. There were two that I kept. 23 items I gave away. They were nothing I would use. And it was supposedly a quilting box. And so I was really disappointed about that. I thought, that's a lot of money. If I divide that up, those two items I kept, there's no way they cost as much as I paid for it when you consider the cost of the box. So that was that was not good. And I said, I'm not doing it again. Well, I, I didn't do that particular one again, but I, did try, I am trying another one because I like the concept. I like the idea. Then we came up with the Joyful and Merry Quilting Quilters 25-Day Countdown to Christmas. Okay, so here's what we're going to do in December, starting December 1st. We're going to advertise it a little bit before, have a little Black Friday thing going on. But starting December 1st, each day, so you have to look at, we'll send out a reminder, but if you look on the, on the channel, on our YouTube channel, every day there's going to be a new video. And each video is either going to introduce a product or a tip or something that, that you can use with another item, something that might be of help to you. Some of them will be a little pricey, but some of them won't. They'll be really inexpensive. You don't have to buy anything. You, there's nothing that you have to buy if you don't want to. If you want to, I'm going to, we'll give you the links. If you want to go to that particular company, I don't have any affiliation with most of those companies. I mean, I, I, I buy from them just because I like their products, um, but I'm going to share those things with you. And then you can look, and maybe if you set aside $200 that you wanted to spend on a Christmas box, maybe you can find enough items in these, in this selection that you spend that $200 in a way that is something that you want, that you are interested in that would be of benefit to you. You don't get a bunch of stuff that you don't want. So that's kind of our philosophy. So we will, you know, I have, we have patterns and, and I have, I have all the items all ready to go. We're just creating the videos, but one of the items is going to be using these beautiful fabrics. And I think you're going to really like it. I love it. And I can't wait to show it to you. So that's going to be one of our items that I'm really excited about that. Um, Okay, some suggestions. Reading the small print. Oh, for my thing, reading the small print using a phone camera. Yeah, you can do that too. Uh, you know, I um, that kind of what you know. I put my glasses on and I was able to see it too. But the phone camera, if you don't have your glasses, that is a really good idea. Or you like, yeah, true. You can enlarge your enlarge uh, your photo so that you can print it out and see what it says. It, you know, getting old is a drag. Um, you can also 
um, uh, for putting wood blocks on the plastic um, pipe, uh, the plastic pipe leg risers. We do that for our make a blanket day. That's true. I didn't think about that. That's a great suggestion. That lifts up the table. So if you're using a table, we do that. Um, how big are our pipes? I don't even. We use an inch, inch and a quarter pipe. Is that right? PVC. Oh, PVC pipe. And it just fits kind of about, I don't know, however high you want your table leg to go. And we set our table in there, our table legs in there, and it raises up the um, it raises up the the table to a height that it doesn't hurt your back. So when you're still standing, it's kind of helpful. So another tip. Thank you very much for offering those. And all of you, you know, I I have trouble. I can't see um, while I'm talking to you. The 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 chat doesn't advance on my iPad. So Terry passes me the information, and I try and answer it as we go along. If I miss anything, I'll try and answer it after the video. So that bed. Bed risers, another another helpful item to keep your to keep your um, uh, make your table a little higher and, and uh, less stress on your back. So there's a lot of good options out there. Thank you. Those are really helpful, and I think that's something that would be that that would be worth a tip. Talking about just different ways to adjust our cutting tables so that that it um, eases up on that stress. Okay, today, today. Um, we tomorrow is our make a blanket day. Project Linus has a make a blanket day, which means that in our chapter, our central Illinois chapter, we gather together as many people who are able to attend. We've got just uh, over a hundred that'll be there tomorrow. And we just sit around all day and make blankets, make fleece, quilts, afghans, whatever. We label the blankets and then uh, we prepare them for delivery. So we do this twice a year, which is a really big event in our chapter. And I love I love everyone getting together and having having this fun interaction as we all you know work side by side serving the children of our community. It's so much fun. It's a lot of work. It's very exhausting. And I've had a lot going on these past few weeks. Um, obviously, when it comes to the Project Linus Mystery Quilt Challenge, and then Joyful and Merry Quilting, and then Make a Blanket Day. So today we got everything prepared. Been working all day, all weekend, trying to get everything ready to go. Loaded up the trailer, which was great. Um, got that all ready to go. And once we got, uh, um, our, we were supposed to meet at three o'clock with everybody uh, to set up the make a blanket day for tomorrow. So as we were driving, we, we have the trailer hooked onto the tr our truck. We drove, we're driving down the road and we looked over at the church parking lot where we're holding the, the event. And it's full, the cart, it's full of people. We thought, oh no, there's something going on at the church and we're supposed to be setting up today. And that always can put a, you know, put a monkey wrench into the works. So we drive the trailer over and we look and there's nobody, we thought, well, we could be helpers, but there was nobody in the cars. So we pulled the trailer in, went inside and every three o'clock was, we were there at three o'clock. Everything was almost set up. Our volunteers showed up at 2.30 got into the church and set everything up. I mean, we're talking a hundred people. So we have a ton of tables and chairs and cords and everything else that goes into this. And it was all done. And so I was so tired during the day. We had prepared all of the blankets and gotten them all bagged up. And we had bagged just about a thousand blankets. We put 15 in a bag. So you can imagine how much work that is just to do that part. And I would, by the time we're ready to go to set up for make a blanket, I'm thinking, Oh, I can't even get out of the car. And they all did it. Isn't that amazing? So if any of my volunteers are watching tonight, they're probably all in bed because they're getting ready for Make a Blanket Day tomorrow. But if they're here, thank you so much. That was such a pleasant surprise to see that. And that's what quilters do for each other. That's what blanketeers, our Project Line is blanketeers do for each other. We help each other. We serve others. We serve the members of our community. So anyway, that was a really positive thing. But I've got to get up early tomorrow. Uh, to get over to the church because everybody will be there by 8.30 wanting in and wanting to get started. So uh, we're all ready to go. All I have to do is drive over there. But uh, anyway, it's been it's been a crazy weekend. Um, okay, let's see what we've got here. Uh, let's see. It's time to make our tissue holder. Isn't that just the cutest little thing? The reason I like this little tissue holder is because if you have, if you put these in your purse, you know, the little plastic packets, um, by the time you've used three or four out of there, it starts to get really raggedy looking. And eventually your Kleenexes, you don't, 
know as though you want to use those anymore because they have been tossed and turned and ripped and torn and they don't look healthy. So having one of these is a lifesaver. Now I made about a hundred of these last year for our, not last year, a couple of years ago for our project line is uh, one of our events and they go together so fast. If you are looking for a favor idea, this is really easy. And I hope you've downloaded the pattern. It's uh, It'll be available until our next YouTube live. So uh, it's uh, joyfulandmerryquilting.com slash owl. Make sure you go there. The luggage tag is no longer available. It's in the store. But now this one is free. So I'm just going to walk you through the process and show you how simple it is. If you've cut your fabrics, if you did it ahead of time, if you've downloaded the pattern, then you can just follow along with me. If not, just come back. And uh, this is the pattern, but you can just come back and do it whenever you're ready. You can just, and then you can start and stop everything as you're going along. Cause I'm going to do it a little more quickly. Uh, so everybody's not just sitting here um, watching me. So sometimes it's a little difficult to hear. So let's go and just take a look at the pattern and you see the materials needed. So all you need are two squares. That's a rectangles. So you've got your two rectangles that you're, you have cut to size and one of them, they have to be contrasting. Okay. You want contrasting fabrics. The larger rectangle, this one is the one that's going to show right here, that little strip. And it's also going to be the inside of my packet. Okay, so that's the larger one. So keep in mind that this one is not going to show hardly at all on the outside, whatever you choose for this fabric, the larger square, the rectangle. The smaller rectangle, I chose a red because these are Christmas colors. Um, the smaller one is uh, going to be on the outside. And I just think this is the prettiest fabric. Isn't that beautiful? This was a layer cake that I had, and I just had a bunch of pieces left over. And so I just found two that matched and put them together. And uh, it's, you know, it, it really, I thought, I thought it was a lot of fun to do. So we've got our two rectangles. If you follow along, that's figure one. It just tells you um, how to cut those rectangles. Then we are going to, we are going to um, clip together the two short ends. Okay. So here's the long ends across the top and the bottom, the short ends are going to be clipped together and sewn on this uh, lengthwise vertical quarter inch seam. So you'll do it this way. Now, if you look at the, at the pattern, you can see that when you do this, and I'll try and show you here without putting it up, there's a bubble. And the reason is because this, this is bigger. This piece is bigger. And so you still, that doesn't matter. What matters is you want to make sure that you have those two ends matched up and then pin, I just pinned them three pins, three pins, and then I sewed it along each side. Okay. So if you're doing this with me, go ahead and sew those pieces together, just right along the edge. Now, as you're doing that, make sure you have right sides together. You want to do that. We always do that with quilting unless we're, we were told otherwise, but you want right sides together, match up the short ends, long ends across the top and the bottom, and sew that quarter inch seam. Okay. Once you have done that, I'm going to have to show down. I'm going to show you on my ironing mat. Okay. And you can see, yeah, you can see. So now here we have those two edges sewn right down here, quarter inch. And we've got that bubble because we know this is larger. Now we're going to turn the outside, the, that outside fabric that I talked about. The fabric that we see most of right here, that's going to be on the top. That's our smaller rectangle. So the smaller rectangle is going to be on the top. Let's turn this right sides out. Smaller rectangle on the top. And then we are going to press these seams right here. Now it's a little difficult to press them because as you can see, you know, they're, they're, they're very tiny, but we want to make sure that 
since we've sewn a quarter inch seam, when we press this, we are going to press toward that skinny piece right here. This this um, outside um, the actually this is the um, away. We're, ugh, let me try again. We're going to press away from that outside fabric. So press toward these little skinny pieces, which is actually that that inside fabric. So we'll put it here, and we take it. To, Take it to your ironing board and just press right across there. And it's not, you know, you can spray with your pressing solution once you're done. Real super easy to do. I mean, you can see, look at how nicely that, that presses. If you want to spray it, it never hurts, I don't think, on something like this to give it a little extra stiffness. So there, now you can see, so let me move it, move it closer here so you can see. You can see how I have that. This is that larger rectangle, and I've got those pieces right there showing, and they're pressed nice and flat. Okay, so we've done this much of it. Let's turn to page two. You should already be there, actually. And if you look at figure seven, we're gonna fold this piece in half with the out, this fabric, not the one, uh, not the inside fabric, the outside fabric, whatever you wanna see the most of, this, oops, this fabric, we're going to fold the two ends together. Now I did these two so you could really see, just for temporary. We're only folding it temporarily this way. We're doing this so we can get that midpoint on this side. And we're gonna mark it with a pin. Mark the midpoint. You can mark it with a pencil if you want. The reason I mark it with a pin is because we're gonna use this pin eventually. And so it's already there. So what I did on mine, I just made that pin go through that middle point you want it as, you know, it, hopefully you're you're pretty accurate here. You just want to make sure that you've lined up those folded edges on the one side so that you can, so you can do this. So here's what I've got. I've got the midpoints marked on each end. Once that's done, Turn to page three. And what we're going to do is we're going to fold these in so that our inside fabric is on the outside. Okay, does that make sense? Inside fabric, which is this, which are these, is going to be on the outside. And we're going to fold that edge all the way over to the middle and a tiny bit past, just a little bit. I've got about an eighth of an inch past, maybe not even that much. Then I'm going to fold the other side over and overlap it just a tad. So it's probably, again, maybe that one sixteenth of an inch or so. And then I'm going to take the pin out that I put in there. That's why I put it in there so close. And I want to make sure I've pinned all the layers together. Double check it as you look. Now, I don't know if you're going to be able to see this, but you see I have them, those edges overlap just a tiny bit on each end. That's what's going to give us this look right here, that overlap, so that when we take our tissue out, it's it'll open, but then it will close back up again. So this is that's what that little bit of an overlap is for. Now that you have that pinned, you're gonna sew a quarter inch seam on each end, okay? Doesn't matter what side is up. Probably this side is up, it'd probably be better so that you don't flip anything. Sew that quarter inch seam on each side of the rectangle on those raw, across those raw edges. So do that. And I have already done that on this one, so. You see, I've got 
quarter inch across here, quarter inch across here. Now, if you want to, you can zigzag that raw edge. I, I didn't. I didn't have any trouble with it. I've never had any trouble with it. So I didn't need to finish off that edge. You don't really have a lot going on inside of this other than taking your tissue packet in and out. And I didn't find that it made any difference. So I didn't do that. But you do need to clip those corners. You can use either a pair of scissors or you can use a, um, a rotary cutter, whatever you want to do. But you want to clip as close as you can to the seam, but you don't want to clip the seam. You don't want to make a hole in the corner. So when I clip, just be really careful. And I'm going to clip that tiny bit off of each corner. This just helps you when you turn it so you don't have a lot of bulk there. So we're going to do that on all edges, on all corners, all four corners. Okay, we're almost done. <laughs> this is a really simple project. What we're going to do now is, if you look at your instructions, we want to, now we need to finish off those corners so we have those nice mitered corners right there. Not mitered, uh, square corners. We want to have those nice square corners on all sides. And the way we do that, and this is important, so follow this along with me. See the opening here? You're going to pull back on the opening, and this is going to just automatically fall into place. See how that falls into place right there? so that you have a triangle created right across this, this part. And you're gonna pin that in place. So this part is, a, you know, it's a little, it's, it's kind of messy here, but it doesn't matter. When you pin it in place, you're gonna pin back a little ways. So I'll show you. My kitty is in here. So you're gonna pin back, probably about this far and make sure that everything is nice and square. You can see you don't want it crooked. You want this to be right down the middle of your triangle. So here's my triangle and this is right down the middle. It'll, it falls into place. I mean, it's, it's really simple, but the key to this is what you want to do. You can leave this pressed sideways. It doesn't make any difference. You're going to take your ruler and I'm going to show you this on the other side so you can see it a little bit better. Okay, um, what we're gonna do is measure three eighths of an inch from the point and draw a line. We're gonna do that for all four corners. So take your ruler and you need three, the three eighths of an inch marking, which is right there. There's two eighths, there's three eighths. And then I'm going to take my pencil. You can use a pencil or a fabric marker or whatever. I put this color, this light fabric on the outside just so you can see. And I'm going to draw a line. Now you're going to look at that line. You say, oh, there's not enough room there. This is exactly what you need. Three eighths of an inch. Don't go bigger. Don't go smaller. Your tissue will not fit in there if you go in, if you, if you go to a half an inch. You only want three eighths of an inch. Then I'm going to take my pin. And I'm going to just pin across that to keep it in place when I take it to my sewing machine. Then I'm going to sew right across that seam right there. Okay, so let's do that. And I've done it. So now I've sewn right across there. You don't clip it. You don't do anything to it. You just leave it like that so that when you turn this right side out, look at how nice that corner comes out. It's beautiful. You're going to do that to all four corners. So now we're going to go to the next one. Now this one's the one that's sort of tucked inside. So you got to be a little careful when you do it. You want to do it with the seam on the top so you can see what you're doing. Otherwise, you don't know if the seam is crooked. I want to make sure that that point is where it should be. We don't want it off this way. We want the point to be the point, which is where the seam allow the the seam um, ends. Same thing. We're going to do our three our three eighths inch. And it's going to go across. 
We're going to draw that line across and we're going to sew it again right there. If you can hold it with your finger, it works. So there, I've got two done. I'm going to show you. There's that nice little seam right there. And we're going to do the same thing to the other two corners. So here we go. Pull those two apart. Make sure that that seam finishes right at the point. Looks pretty straight going across here. And then we are going to mark that 3 8 of an inch on this side and sew it. And we have one last one to do again. Like before, by the time you get to the fourth one, you're real good at it. By the time you get to the hundredth tissue pouch and your 400th corner, they are perfect, let me tell you. Or they get sloppy. It kind of depends. Sometimes I get sloppy. So here we go again. We want to mark that three eighths. It's hard to see with this ruler because it's got those markings on there. I, I should have used my other ruler but I can see where the 3 eighths is. And I'm gonna sew that again. Okay, and guess what? We're done. So I'm gonna take my little tissue pouch out of here, or my little tissue package out of here. I'm gonna turn this right side out. None of that inside stuff shows. And you know, you really don't even have a lot, any corners to poke out. They just kind of poke out naturally. And look at, there it is. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna pop that packet inside. And this is just, you know, I, I bought the packets at the Dollar Tree. I um, bought them in bulk. I think I got 48 of them. Uh, for I don't know what, but um, look, there we go. That's it. That's all there is to it. And it looks so good. You can see that those ends look nice where they're overlapped. And here you can tuck this back inside. Oops. You can tuck that back inside when it goes in your purse so it doesn't get all messed up or dirty. And it's got, you know, how the, 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 the packet has the little resealable. But the problem is when it's just hanging around in your purse, that resealable goes, you know, it gets it gets linty and, and uh, it doesn't stick anymore. So this way you can just tuck everything back in when you need it. There you go. So that's it. That's our little tissue pouch. That is our fifth um, favor in our favor grouping, our favor, um, the, the five favors that we did. Remember we did the candle cozy or the mug rug. Now that we'll call it a mug rug too. We also did the... Um, we did the luggage tag, we did the pillowcase, we did the hexagon potholder, and then we did this. So eventually, this is going to be free again until um, this, this uh, packet pattern will be free um, for until our next live, which will be November 13th. And then we're going to put everything into um, a bundle that will be available on our website for all five patterns. So if you didn't get the other patterns, it's cheap. They'll be cheap. Um, but you can go ahead and uh, or, uh, download those patterns at that time. But get this one. It's free. So anyway, um, that's it for today. Thank you so much. I'm tired. I'm ready to go to bed. I'm a night owl, but, uh, you know, when they make me get up early in the morning, geez, you know, it kind of cramps my style. So anyway, um, I'm excited that I could be here with you tonight. This is, like I said, truly a highlight of my week. Always. I really enjoy being here. And, uh, if you have any other questions, um, uh, please let me know. Uh, just leave a comment if, if the chat is over and I will do my very best to answer those answer those questions. But I am always trying to be joyful, but I will always be merry. 
Thank you so much for joining me. And I will see you next time when we have our night owl quilting. Or you can join us uh, when we have our daytime quilting as well. We send out the emails for that. Don't forget to go to our website and sign up, joyfulandmerryquilting.com. And then you'll get emails that will notify you of all that. Don't forget to like and subscribe uh, to our channel here. Uh, it really helps out. And I really, really, really appreciate it. So thank you very much. Comment if you want. I'll answer everything you ask. So thanks again. And uh, we'll see you again.